Well, I think they've done a really good job. And I think the other side has so lied. But this has happened to me with the Russian hoax. This has happened to me. I called it the witch hunt, greatest witch hunt in American history. And the Mueller report, which exonerated totally. There was no collusion. After all that, two years, there was no collusion. President Trump talking impeachment there earlier in Davos, Switzerland. As we await opening arguments to begin this afternoon, the president saying he'd rather have a long trial with some witnesses, but it's up to the Senate to handle it. For more on this, let's bring in Robert Ray. He is one of the president's advisors on the legal team. He's also former Whitewater Independent Counsel, of course, and a former federal prosecutor. Robert, thanks for coming in. Thanks, Ed. How did day one go for your side? I think that day one will probably, by the time this is over, be long forgotten. I know there's been some focus on the, the acrimony and the, maybe the personal invective. But look, what, what, mon, what, what uh, yesterday was about was simply to arrive at a Senate resolution that determined the ground rules, the procedural rules for the trial. So this was really more about pretrial uh, skirmishing than anything yeah. else. Uh, the trial begins in earnest at, at 1 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, no doubt about it. Now, you mentioned invective. Let's hear some of that from uh, the Democrats and let you react. And they lie, and lie, and lie, and lie. For example, for months, President Trump has repeatedly complained that the House denied him the right to call witnesses. Robert, they, you know, Jerry Nadler, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, said your side is treacherous in what you're doing and repeatedly said you're lying. I prefer to focus on the merits. That's what a trial is about. Both sides will have more than sufficient time to present that case. And then ultimately, it will be up to the Senate to decide. And I'm not about trying to tell the Senate what to do. I'm about trying to persuade the Senate what they, what they should, should do in the national interest. And, you know, our hope is that, um, you know, for the good interests of the country, uh, you know, our position is that the, uh, the Senate doesn't need to hear from witnesses. But, of course, mm -hmm. if they do, uh, it has to be fair and it has to be done fairly to both sides. Real quick, uh, do you think it was a miscue by the impeachment managers for the Democrats to say, among other things, the Senate is on trial and put this on the senators and almost lecture them? My own view uh, and, you know, my experience, of course, is uh, colored by the fact that I've been a federal prosecutor as well as a defense lawyer. I, I never have thought it's a good argument in, a, in connection with a criminal case or in this situation somewhat of a quasi-criminal case to be suggesting that the, the government um, or the, uh, the court system is mm -hmm. on trial. The fact of the matter is the House impeachment managers and the House of Representatives have impeached the president and have placed the defendant on trial. Right. Only the defendant is on trial. The defendant is Donald Trump. Well, uh, we were pressing them and what mistakes they have made. Let's get to the mistakes that the Washington Post editorial page says your side is making. They have an editorial today. Uh, Mark, Trump's impeachment defense is designed to destroy guardrails on presidential power. They write the defense brief they filed Monday, argues that the president did absolutely nothing wrong. It further contends Mr. Trump was entirely within his rights when he refused all cooperation with the House impeachment inquiry. It says he cannot be impeached because he violated no law by asking Senator Senators to ratify those positions, Mr. Trump and his lawyers are, in effect, seeking consent, consent for an extraordinary expansion of his powers. Your reaction? The principal guardrail with regard to the exercise of presidential power is called an election. And guess what? We have one just nine months away. So I disagree with the, 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 the foundational premise of that uh, editorial. Uh, second, um, you know, th this is what we have a trial to determine. Uh, it's also true that the president has, uh, as all presidents have, going all the way back to George Washington, Washington asserted from time to time executive privilege. Ultimately, mm -hmm. it's for courts to decide whether or not that's a proper assertion of executive privilege. And it doesn't get to be determined as legitimate until such time as a court says so. But Our position has been that the House of Representative, Representatives yeah. jumped the gun on a, a uh, early termination of that legal process sure. in the House. And now they're seeking essentially to turn that around on the president by charging him with obstruction of Congress but when the president did what he's lawfully entitled to do until such time 
uh, if and okay. when a court decides otherwise. Fair enough. But last point, uh, when the Post, uh, they specifically say uh, that your side kept saying, the president did absolutely nothing wrong. Even Jonathan Turley, who was pretty friendly to your side during those House hearings way back, uh, is now saying this morning it's a mistake to keep saying it was a perfect phone call. Nothing here was done wrong. Shouldn't there be some middle ground on your defense side, even if you don't think he should be impeached over it or removed from office, to just keep saying he did absolutely nothing wrong? Is that a mistake? It's always wise in any trial proceeding to give credit to the best of the arguments that come from the other side and to try to persuade um, the decision maker, in this case, United States senators, as to why your position is correct. Look, whatever your views are about whether or not the president's call was perfect or not, our position is quite simple that these uh, impeachment uh, offenses, the articles of impeachment, are not sustainable as legitimate uh, under the Constitution, under a historical practice, and with the framers' intent in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not an expansion of presidential power. That's a right. recognition of how our system of constitutional government uh, performs. And, you know, I look forward to presenting together with my colleagues that argument to the United States Senate okay. for their consideration and deliberation. Got it. Robert Ray, busy man right now. We certainly appreciate you sharing some time with us this morning. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Great to be with you, Ed, from Washington. Look forward to seeing you soon.